That it is, Jason. As you said, Tigers and Tide, and here come the Tigers of LSU riding a three-game winning streak. And the team that's beaten them six straight, the second-ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. Moments ago, third member of our team, Allie LaForce with Nick Saban. Coach, LSU has a very unique style of offense. What's the biggest challenge in stopping them? Well, I think everybody being disciplined to do their job on the perimeter to get the right support. The inside players got to read the right things. They can't get influenced by all the shift in motion, eye candy, we call it. So it's, it just takes a lot of discipline for everybody to execute and do their job. We are officially into November. What do you still need to see from your team to finish in championship form? Well, we got to overcome hard. You know, we haven't had anything hard yet. So we need to overcome hard, tough game. See how we respond when your best is needed. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. All right, thank you. I actually do think that's the, the real call, Brad. We've done these games, and there's always been a clutch play late that Alabama's made. A.J. McCarron, the screen pass, they've made the late plays to win this game. Well, they've won 22 straight conference games as we go back to Alley. Coach, you're facing an Alabama team who has lost once at Bryant Denny Stadium the last 33 games. How do you do what seems to be the impossible here in Tuscaloosa? We gotta believe, we gotta believe in each other. We gotta play LSU football. What a great atmosphere. We're ready for the challenge. You said Alabama has one of the best rushing attacks you've ever seen. What will be key in limiting their effect? You know, the execution, the backs run the ball very hard, very well coached. We gotta stay in our gap, we gotta attack. Good luck, coach. Thank you. I can't believe he didn't say go Tigers. <laughs> First time. His Tigers won the toss, deferred. Alabama will receive. Cameron Gamble has got it teed up. 71 degrees, beautiful night. The 82nd renewal of the Tigers and the Tide. Trayvon Diggs and Henry Ruggs back deep for Alabama. If this doesn't get your blood flowing, nothing will. Kicks returnable from the nine yard line by Ruggs. Across the 25, out to about the 26 yard line, and that's where Alabama will go to work. So we take a look at the Chick fil A starting lineups, and it all starts with the sophomore quarterback, Jalen Hurts, right about on his numbers as far as completion percentage from a year ago. 15 total touchdowns. Sometimes has a little inconsistency with his accuracy, but man. Can he make you miss when he's a running back? Yeah, and he's a different quarterback this year because the plan of attack is allowing Jalen to throw the ball over the middle. Will they do it against this good LSU defense? That's the question. As Gary said a year ago in the fourth quarter, he put the team on his shoulders, and that's how they won 10-0. First snap from the 26, and it's Damian Harris. And Harris goes out for about five as we take a look at the rest of the offensive lineup for the tie. Jonah Williams will have his hands full. He's one of the best in college football, but he'll be lined up against Arden Key a lot tonight. Alabama goes with tempo right off the bat, second and five. Hurts running out of time, and down he goes back at the 20-yard line. Devin White and Christian Lockature in on the sack. LSU's defense. You can pick out some guys there. Corey Thompson's one of the guys that makes a big difference as far as rushing the quarterback and is one of the guys Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator for Alabama, said, I'm as worried about him as I am Arden Key. Yeah, I thought that was a coverage sack, though. The LSU plays man-to-man -man and challenges you to find the right guy. They won't be wide open against man-to-man -man coverage. Tigers look like they're going to bring a blitz. They will. It's Thompson coming from the outside. Hurts down the middle, got his man. It's going to be short of the first down as he got it to Foster, but he's about a yard shy. And that's the difference. LSU made their run when they decided to go to man-to-man -man coverage. They have challenged their three corners. Jackson, Tolliver, and Greedy Williams. One of them's just a true freshman. The other two have seen three years of SEC football. That's exactly how LSU wanted to start, a three and out. And look at when you kick it to that guy. We've seen what he can do. DJ Chark has two punt returns for touchdowns this year as J.K. Scott will kick it away. But J.K. Scott has not had a punt return of one of his punts this season. 
And he won't have one here either. Chark Wu almost lost it as he stumbles backward around the 10 yard line. And they're actually going to spot it at the nine. As we take a look at the Chick fil A starting lineup, going the other way. And it starts with their quarterback, the senior, Danny Etling, making his 19th start for the LSU Tigers after starting a lot of games at Purdue before came coming in here. We've seen him do some good things the last couple weeks, Gary. Yes, and he's healthier this year than he was a year ago. To be honest, when we talked to Coach Ogeron, he thought he was shaky last year. The word he used all week is we have to protect Danny. The Tigers start from the nine-yard line. Shovel pass incomplete. Well, we have a penalty. I, I don't think they got a start. <laughs> start seven. Offense. Five yard penalty. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. DJ Chark with a false start, so they're really backed up now. As you take a look at the Tigers offensively, you're going to see a lot of John David Moore and Moreau, the other tight end, shifting back and forth in Matt Canada's offense. They'll go from side to side, and usually those tight ends will lead you to where the ball's going to be, but not all the time. Wow, big time I bet on balance right, and they come back only had one player to the right of the center. Now they have two. Just inside the five. There is Geis. And a good game for Geis against the Alabama defense that only gives up 66 yards a game on the ground. Rashawn Evans, one of two tied players that's on the semifinal list for the Butchers Award. And we've nicknamed him Dr. Evans, right? Dr. Evans. Because he was telling us how he gives his own treatment to his groin, in groin injury. <laughs> he headed up the whole process. He had one two years ago. He had one this yes, year. Yes, he knows exactly what he's doing. And he's healthy. And when he's healthy, he's a difference maker. Second and nine. Shovel inside goes nowhere. Uh, there's the difference maker. Yep, the doctor. And he just operated on Moreau for no gain. When you turned on, I watched the Pitt-Clemson game from a year ago as you watched the shovel pass inside. The reason I did is Matt Canada upset Clemson as the offensive coordinator for Pitt a year ago. And out of the first 12 plays, they ran three shovel passes. I have a feeling Nick Saban watched the same game tape. <laughs> and then some. Yes. <laughs> LSU with a third and nine at 36 percent on the third down conversions. Russell Gage the motion man. Etling, here comes the heat. He got rid of it. Jump ball and it's complete. Wow, what a throw. Stefan Sullivan. I tell you, when you're going to throw the ball against Alabama, you know you are going to get pressure. You know when you let go of it, you're going to get hit. But Danny steps into this. It was Dr. Evans again who did it. Yep. But it was delivered perfectly. And a quick snap. Swing pass out to Geis. He stood up and still standing. Gain of about two. That last pass play, 31 yards from Etling to Stephon Sullivan. Well, the previous pass, they bunched this Alabama defense crisscrossed. Tough to play man-to-man -man coverage with those three guys bunching and going in different directions. So LSU's gotten out of the shadow of their own goalpost out to the 44-yard line of Alabama. Second and seven. Again, Gage in motion. Play fake. Etling wants a home run. Long ball, man out there, and incomplete. Some incidental contact, but no flag. And Minka Fitzpatrick, oh, brother, he goes down. And he's holding Ooh, his left the, hand Probably straight. the most important player for this Alabama football team is Minka Fitzpatrick. He's the quarterback of the defense. He gets everybody in the proper spot. And, of course, he's got experience as corner and safety. He doesn't panic, but he sure looks like he pulled up there, doesn't it? Looks like a left hamstring. He grabs it right there. And remember, he is, in this defense, the safety in their regular package. He's the slot corner in their nickel package, and he's the dime linebacker in their dime package. He's the whole deal. 
He's trying to run it off. Again, he was trying to make up ground on Chark. I don't think there was any interference, and maybe it was because he pulled up. Just a note, Darius Geis wide open after the play. Look at this. After he takes the fight, nobody covers mm. Geis. Mark that down. And had that ball been a little bit farther in front of Chark, it might have been a touchdown. As it is, third and seven. Williams in the backfield with Etling. Here comes the pressure from Alabama. Etling pump fakes once and oh, throws it away. I, I, did that get across the line of scrimmage? No, it didn't. I don't know if it did get across the line of scrimmage. He was out of the pocket, and the ball has to get passed. He was throwing it to Williams, or at least attempting to show throw it in that direction. Did you see someone there? Because I don't know if I, I think saw 28 anybody. was there, but let's see. Williams now just going to try to, well, he was oh, boy, that was very, very good break for LSU because that could have easily been called intentional grounding. You can see the blue line. It was not past the blue line. Bob Rosenberg to punt. Xavier Marks late fair catch and takes it at the 10 yard line. So almost five minutes in. Neither team able to score so far at Bryant Denny in Tuscaloosa. And now do Project Smarter presented by Home Depot. Gary? Well, we talked about it early. A little different tweak to the passing game this year with Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator from Lane Kiffin a year ago. Of course, Jalen Hurts is a little more experienced. More passes over the middle of the field. We saw it in the Tennessee game when he just shredded him in that game. Jalen Hurts was 8 for 19 of his attempts were over the middle. Seven of them were completions in that game. And for the season, you can see he's almost a third of his passes are in the middle of the field. I loved your question to Calvin Ridley yesterday. Yeah, he said, <laughs> how do you like breaking inside? And he just kind of winked, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Not that he wants to say anything bad about anybody, uh -uh. but a receiver likes to go both directions. So Alabama has to work from its own 10-yard line. Most Garborough in the backfield for the first time. Yeah, and Calvin Ridley in this offense will line up all over the field, this time near slot as a end. Ooh, Bo. Bo is hit by Key immediately. Almost took the handoff from Hertz. Yeah, and how different. And this has got to be a busted assignment for this Alabama offense. How do you not block the point of attack with Arden Key? Nope. No one's going to block him. It had to either be Irv Smith or a left tackle, Jonah Williams. One of the two guys has got to take that guy. Hard to run that direction. So the guy we talked about at the beginning of the show drops him for a five-yard loss. And Scarborough gets about four of that back. And we've got an update from Alec. Guys, Minka Fitzpatrick still in the trainer's tent. He's laying face down on the trainer's table. They are working on the left hamstring. Now, when he came off the field, he did stay and watch a play before racing to the tent, if that gives you any indication of a sense of urgency. You know, it, it really is hard to believe that he could pull up. He was out here an hour and a half early running, and if you go to a third day, Thursday practice, he never stops running. Doesn't even want to come off the practice Correct. field. Third and 11 for Hertz. Throws on the run and throws a strike to Calvin Ridley, the aforementioned wide receiver, his favorite target. Well, we talked about Jonah Williams doing the job at left tackle. He's got the matchup right here. Watch him. He pulls, not really pulls him down, but he swipes Arden Key's hands away and allows Jalen Hurts to get up in the pocket and throw that ball over the middle. Jacobs in there, now spreads out as a wide receiver. And it's Scarborough behind Hurts, first down at the 24. Straight give to Bo off the right side. Got about three. And we've got an at t field pass. Here's Adam Zucker in New York. All right, Brad. It was already the highest scoring Bedlam game ever when Oklahoma's Trey Sermon goes 53 yards here. And the fifth ranked Sooners have a 10 point lead. It is almost finally over right now in Stillwater. Oklahoma on top by 10, guys. Well, they've had some crazy games over the years, and that's just another. Do they have different rules in that conference? You or might, something? About defense, you mean? I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> Here's Hurts. Pressure coming. Can he get away from it? He got away from one man, and now he's heading to the sideline, and he's going to get a first down. And that's what Jalen Hurts can do so well. well. I'll tell you, John Battle would like that one over again. 
He had another defender with him attacking Hurts, and he gets by two players here. Devin White Devin, the other yeah, guy. the best tackler in the league. They needed to pinch Jalen Hurts there. It would have been the third negative play of the game for this Alabama offense, and that's an escape that's hard to believe. And another first down for Alabama. John Ballard was jumping up and down on the field, so mad at himself after that miss. Hurts, plenty of time. Going to air it long. Man there, got him. Complete to Henry Ruggs. And for Henry, that's his first catch this year that hasn't been a touchdown. Well, he had Ruggs or Judy on this place. Judy's going to go inside. Ruggs is going to go the other way. A double post. Man-to-man -man coverage. Both of them were wide open. And as you say, Ruggs just ruined his streak. <laughs> I think he'll take it, right? He said to Calvin Ridley yesterday, have you told Ruggs that not every catch is going to be a touchdown? He might have to get a first down. He goes, yeah, we mentioned it too. You know what's incredible is he was standing on that sideline with all those other recruits a year ago for this game. And now Scalbro goes for 10 more. The Ruggs catch was 47 yards on that previous play. And think about it. True freshman Jerry Judy and true freshman Henry Ruggs running that pass route in that thing. And they've gotten some playing time here because Alabama has blown a lot of people out, allowing some of the young players to get PT time. First and goal now for Bama. Just inside the eight, Jalen Hurts keeps it, gets to the four. Devin White made the stop along with Lockature. Alabama, the Verizon Red Zone offense for the tie this year, 42 trips, 29 of them touchdowns. Well, in last year's game, LSU had a third quarter goal line stand where they stopped Alabama on fourth down. They could use one here. Mika puts Patrick back out of the tent at least. Second goal at the four. Toss fake to Scarborough. Hurts on the throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Irv Smith. What a great read by Irv Smith on the play. Instead of to keep running across the field, he feels the open area and settles down. He's at tight end right here. Watch him come and just kind of feel this open area and stop. Little play action pass. Comes across, feels the open spot, puts his hands up, and Jalen hands it off to him from about 10 yards away. Papanastas in for the point after. It'll hold up here before the extra point. Now we're ready to go. If it was an NFL game, we'd think it's a review of the touchdown, right? Right. <laughs> I know we're reviewing it, but we're pretty sure it's a touchdown. Pretty sure. Six oh eight remaining first quarter. Papanastas extra point is right down the middle. Well, I got to say, after the upsets today, with Barkley at Penn State and Barrett at Ohio State, could Jalen Hurts be sneaking into the Heisman story? I don't know, but he was four for four for 80 yards, including that long run. And that Houdini escape, he made it. And then the post route down the middle to the freshman rugs, and then he finishes it off. The threat of the run, which he ran just the previous play, that's enough to allow the tight end to find the spot and a touchdown. What a try. 90 yards, nine plays, four minutes, seven nothing, Alabama. Get the CBS Sports app for the fastest scores and inside access to LSU, Alabama, or whoever your favorite team might be. Download the CBS Sports app today. Jalen Hurts, 10th touchdown pass of the year a few moments ago, and also 66 yards to cap it off to Herb Smith. What do you do if you're LSU? You know, you can't panic. But you remember how many yards you've run against these guys the last three years. Yeah. You start thinking, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Let's not panic, but what do we do? Got a pretty decent kick return. That'll help the cause. 
Let's check in and get an update on Minka Fitzpatrick with Allie. Guys, Minka Fitzpatrick just ran back onto the field. He came out of the tent. His left hamstring was heavily wrapped. He tried to do some high knees, still looked uncomfortable, but he got on the bike, ran to the sidelines, had a conversation with Coach Saban, and they decided to let him give it a try. I wonder if they go after him. Absolutely what I was going to say is the big part of Matt Canada's offense is the jet sweeps. The number one defender of the jet sweep for the Alabama defense is Mika Fitzpatrick. Let's see if they don't go jet sweep at number 29. He does not look like he's 100% to me. And there's all the shifting going on. Chark goes up to the top of your screen. And Moreau, the tight end in motion. And they blitz him, though. Flare it out to Geis. And Averitt made the tackle out in space. So here's the dilemma if you're calling plays for LSU. The last three years, the LSU quarterback, we always talk about the running game, has averaged 99 yards a game and 36% completions. Anthony Jennings, 8 for 26. Brandon Harris, 6 for 19 in 2015. And last year, Danny Etling was 11 for 20 for 24. Matt Canada is looking for some help. Second and nine. Etling under center. Gives it to Geis on a version of the jet sweep. Alabama's defense doesn't give up much. Number one in the country in total defense, number one in rushing defense, number one in scoring defense. You name it. They're there on almost every category. Quick snap to Etling. Quick slant to Chark. Yep. First How about down. that? Right at Mika Fitzpatrick. Matchup against Fitzpatrick. You call him a safety, but remember, he started his career at corner. He's on the slot right there, and that's a tough matchup and a good throw by Danny Etling. I thought last year Etling missed about four or five completable balls. When we went out of our meeting, Matt Canada and Ed Ogeron agreed with me. He has to play better. Here's the shift. Three ta two tackles to the left, the tight end, short right. And the give is to Gage on the jet sweep and the hurdle. Russell Gage, and it's going to be about two yards shy of the first down. He went over Minka Fitzpatrick, yeah, and, and he's down he's again. Yep, he is. We had the jet sweep and the explosion jump off of it, didn't we? Yeah, I, I, when he came on, he did not look good to me. And then he had to plant that left yep. leg to try to get the tackle. It's a big difference. You know, that, that is a big difference. Remember, a year ago, they lost Eddie Jackson. Right. And it really might not have showed up until the last game against Clemson. Nick Fitzpatrick has spent more time in a tent than if he was on a camping trip right. so much in the first right. quarter here. He's going yeah. back in. And it looks like it may be his head that was rocked. Ooh. See, I was bent over yeah. to his left shoulder by Russell Gage. Chin strap came off the whole thing as Gage with the hurdle. And, and we asked, you know, uh, would they attack Minka Fitzpatrick? There's been four plays in this drive. All four went at Fitzpatrick. The first one he blitzed, so it wasn't noticeable, but the other three were. So LSU in Alabama territory. Second down and a long one. Various guys in motion. They're going to give it to him. Coming back to the near side, he's got a first down. It just looks different. I mean, you know, we've been watching these games uh, since 2011. And it always was, under Les's offense, kind of a challenge Alabama's manhood. And, you know, it wasn't been all bad. There were a couple games at Baton Rouge. They could have won late in the game. It was Alabama making clutch plays. But this feels a little bit more realistic, the way they're trying to run the ball, that they're not challenging Alabama's manhood. They're trying to run it, but finesse them at the same time. And again, they switch their tackles. We actually ran into each other trying to get set. First down at the 42. Play action for Etling. Long ball. Trying it again. Just overshot Chark. Chark kind of stumbled as he got to the end zone. Averett was covering. I know it's tough. As a quarterback, you have to make a split section, split second decision on whether to throw the ball deep. Because if you wait too long, these receivers will outrun you. But again, the crossing route was open. 
Geist was open earlier after the fake, and this time Russell Gage coming across the formation was open. Those will be categorized and remembered and go over with Danny Etling and said, Danny, we got different ways to drop this ball off. Don't be afraid to look for your second guy. Yeah, I think if Chark would have stayed on his regular course, that would have been a touchdown. Might have had a chance, didn't he? Yep. Here's a sweep to Dillon. And Dedrick Dillon picked up a couple. Minkin wants back in the football game, and Matt Canada might agree because <laughs> he went right at him. First play, there was a blitz. Second play, the sweep right at Fitzpatrick. The third play, a slant with Shark right at him. And then obviously the jet sweep with Russell Gage. That's play calling, big time play calling. Go after the weakest guy and find out if he can go. Biggest third down of the first quarter here for LSU, third and seven. Alabama brings the blitz. Etling fires. Oh, nice back shoulder throw. Very Incomplete. Nice. Levi Wallace, though, broke it up. Can't do it much better than that. You're throwing a back shoulder throw. You got to depend on your guy to make this catch. They're never easy, but D. Anderson, you know, it was six inches too high, but I've seen guys make catches like that. I remember one guy named Odell Beckham Jr., wherever <laughs> he is, would have caught that one one hand. Yeah, Jarvis right? Landry might have, too. Yeah. So they're going to have to punt. Josh Groudon will do the honors this time. Just end over end. Right? End over end just wants to keep it around the 10, and it lands at the 9 with Marks with a fair catch. And that's a little familiar to last year's games. We'll talk about it when we come back. Field position was a story last year. Well, last time it was a 90-yard drive. Alabama would have to go 91 where they are right now. Great doubleheader day tomorrow on CBS First. The NFL's top defense, Denver, takes on the hottest team in the league, the Eagles. And then it's the Chiefs and the Cowboys. Jim Tony and Tracy will be there. Tony Romo goes home or gets to sleep in his own bed, I guess. Day kicks off with the NFL today. Presented by Southwest Airlines, 12 Eastern on CBS. Let's check back in with Allie. Guys, Minka's last visit to the tent was head-related, but they did clear him to play, and now he's moved up the stationary bike to behind the bench so he can still listen in on the defensive meetings. Teammates checking in on him, coaches checking in with Tony Brown, even giving him some words of inspiration, telling him, you know what, it's mind over matter. We can get through this together. <laughs> yeah, it, that's nice when it's your mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, Tony. He's chomping at the bit to get back in the next time the defense is out there, but right now the offense has it at the nine-yard line. Damian Harris broke one tackle. Going to take Corey Thompson for a ride for about eight yards. This is a little different for this Alabama attack a year ago. Pulling the offensive tackle Jonah Williams on this play. Didn't see a lot of that year ago. Watch. Left tackle pulls across the formation this time with the lead block. It's a counter play from the same side. Very clever. Jonah Williams, a 300-pounder with quick feet on that last block. And here's Harris just picking his way up to the 20-yard line for a first down. You know, Brad, I was talking about the field position. Last year's game, as you remember, ended up 0-0 after three quarters. And one of the reasons was in the first half, Alabama's field position, they averaged the 12-yard line. But listen to this. They had the ball six times. They started on the 14, the 32, the 12, the 1, the 9, and the 5. Wow. Six drives, and they had tough field position. They never really opened it up last year in the first half. Here they've got a first down right at the 20. Calvin Ridley in motion now settles in on the left. Jalen Hurts. Here comes Arden Key. Hurts got rid of it at the last moment. Incomplete intended for Ridley. That's what Arden Key has to do. Make change the game. Make him a pressure point where Alabama has to find him. This time he lines up on LSU's left side, going against Womack, and it forces the play and breaks it down. That's what a great player can do in a game like this when we say the stars have to make a difference. Arden Key back to the kind of shape he wanted to be in, gained some weight after surgery in the offseason. That was the first incompletion for Jalen Hurts, by the way. And that's the second. Damian Harris tagged as soon as he touched the ball by Donnie Alexander. Allie. 
Guys, Mink is really close with his dad, and his dad actually made his way up to the gate behind the bench. Minka went over to him. They shared a moment together, and his dad told me, he just told him, be patient. Let them work on you. Don't try to race out there. You want to be 100% when you get back out there. I like they, that they, fatherly advice. I really do. Yes. And it went a long way. Well, there's no way Alabama will put him in the game if he's not ready to play, no. especially with a head type of injury like that. Third and ten. Tigers bring an extra rusher, and it's going to pay off, and it's Corey Thompson, the guy we talked about that Brian Dable was concerned about. Uh, isn't that interesting? I mean, we right away talked about to, to Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator for Alabama. What about Arden Key? What about Arden Key? And he goes, hey, what about number 23? Yep. The sixth-year player that has gone through so much. And how about this LSU defense? You know, they have answered, and they are the ones getting the negative plays in this game so far. J.K. Scott's not a kick from his own end zone now. Let's see if he can keep it away from Chark this time with that much field in front of him. Oh, he hit it a mile in the air. And he does keep Chark from returning it because he's got to take the fair catch around the 39. Yes, that's 26 punts and the 16th fair catch against him. Great job. And now we got a little mix up going on. The end of the play. They better be careful. Ronnie Harrison's running out there and getting in the action. Now, fortunately for Alabama, he's on defense. So him running out there isn't a big deal. It's not like Marshawn Lynch running out there, no. right? That's <laughs> <laughs> a little different. Since Ronnie is on defense and plays safety, happens right in the middle of the screen here. Let's see. A little oh, pushing yeah. and shoving in the middle. All right. We'll talk in two on one. Alabama. Oh, and there's uh, Dr. Evans coming in there to make sure <laughs> everybody knows what's going on. So LSU will work from the 39. Etling in the shotgun. A quick throw to the outside. Who's going to get it? It's Harrison. Yep. Ronnie Harrison with the interception. Boy, it's a matchup you got to love. You've got your strong safety matched up. They believe Ronnie Harrison is not a great cover guy. He's playing in Mika Fitzpatrick's spot. They go right at him with Darius Geis. Not a great route by Geis. And Ronnie Harrison, the leading tackler on this Alabama team, makes the first big play for this Alabama defense. Geis was trying to fight for it, but with that somersault, it was Ronnie Harrison's ball pretty much all the way. And so the first big defensive play, he gets the championship belt for the time being. 36th straight game with a takeaway. He took his helmet off, still on the oh, field. Yeah, he did. Ooh, big collision with Josh Jacobs. And, and every time you do that, you put it at risk. You know, sometimes you don't get seen. You kind of blend into the sideline, and, <laughs> and nobody sees it. And sometimes you get called. Kind of hard to blend in in this first quarter. There's some hitting going on in Tuscaloosa. And a one, Alabama. 7-0 lead over the Tigers of LSU will return to Tuscaloosa after this message and a word from your local station. Set to start the second quarter in Tuscaloosa. Second-ranked Alabama with a 7-0 lead over the 19th-ranked Tigers of LSU. And they've got the ball just inside the Tiger 35-yard line. And they're coming after him. And going to be a short game for Scarborough as we start the second quarter. We welcome you back to Tuscaloosa. Brad Nestle and Gary Danielson. A little bit off the football thing here. Today. Well, not really. Yep. The guy that wore this headset and starred on this show for about two decades, our good friend Vern Lundquist, had back surgery this morning in Vail, Colorado. The good news is everything went beautifully. Millions of people watching, but one important guy in Vail watching. And what I say as we watch this one third down call, Oh man, and he a first that down one. throw to Calvin Ridley. Yeah. First and goal. 
Nice protection that time. No pressure from Key or Thompson. Short set by Ridley. Remember, the threat of going inside is there, and he caught it to the outside. Pick up a 24. Funny how that works. When you can go right or left, it's a lot harder to cover you. Ridley really runs nice routes. He does. At the nine-yard line. And heading to the end zone is Bo Scarborough. Touchdown. Big bow for the seventh time finds the end zone on the ground. Now we do a lot of talking all the time about Jonah Williams, but on the right side of that line, Lester Cotton and Matt Womack are really coming on. They might be the two most powerful offensive linemen they have at the point of the attack. They don't pull them a lot, but boy, that looked nice going right on that play. Jalen Hurts picked him apart, throwing the ball, and then Bo Scarborough, the nightmare from a year ago, continues to impress. So Danny Etling pacing that sideline is going to be in a two touchdown hole when LSU takes the field on offense. Because after the interception, it was Hurts to Ridley. That set him up first and goal. Bo Scarborough did the rest from nine yards out for number nine. Touchdown, Alabama. Thirty seven yard drive four plays less than a minute 14 nothing Alabama I want to finish our thought we talked to Vern Lundquist yesterday the whole crew and we talked to Nancy his wife today everything went beautifully in his operation the last thing he said to me with a voicemail last night he said we've been with you every step of the way have a great call I don't know if you're listening Vern but thanks a lot <laughs> well, and, and I've been challenging him all year that you got to get ready for the Masters get to That's that right. 16th tower and you know we got a guy here tonight Justin Thomas that you could be calling one of those epic calls that you make all the time the old SEC conference loves to watch the Masters and we'll be seeing that guy right there and we hope to be seeing Vern. get healthy big guy two yards deep Edwards Elaire will take a knee. They'll bring it out to the 25 yard line and a Thanks. little scuffle going on at the end of that kick return as well. Catch a brand new episode of Young Sheldon, season's number one new show, Thursday after the Big Bang Theory here on CBS. You know, ironically, about the Minka Fitzpatrick story, to just stay one more time with it, he told us Friday that the reason he came to Alabama was in 2013 when he was a junior he came to this game and watched it and he goes I got to be a part of this yeah. game right here he was still thinking about what Notre Dame at that time and probably 50 other schools and there's a whole bunch of recruits here tonight too that are maybe the future Minka Fitzpatrick's for Alabama here's a jet sweep Russell Gage Alabama waiting on it but he still makes four yards out of it Sean Dion Hamilton ran him down and one of the things as you watch Russell Gage run this play is when you're defending this Matt Canada LSU offense, it's almost like an invert option offense. You know, in the option offense, you have to do a assignment inside out with the fullback and then the pitch is the last phase. Well, in this offense, the threat of the jet sweep is the first phase. If that's there, they're going to give the ball. Then everything flows off of that. So even if it's not working, you have to continue to run the jet sweep. Again, they do the tackle over to the right side. Gage with the jet sweep. They'll try going the other way. Stop, starts, and goes down at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard out of it. What you have to do is anticipate where the motion's going to be outside. Don't not where he's at. Anticipate where he's going to be. Remember, he's getting a full head of steam. You cannot let him outflank you just by alignment. You have to assume that when he gets the ball, he's going to be outside of you right away. Perfectly defended that time. Florida, by Alabama. Florida didn't get wide enough when they played these guys, and that cost them several times. Third down at four. They empty the backfield. Etling throws complete. And it's first down, Stefan Sullivan. Yeah, and, and that's what they need. 
if they could keep the ball a little bit, make some first downs. Again, watching the tape from a year ago, Danny had about two or three of those a year ago in a tight football game that he missed. That's the one. Just pitch and catch, just move the chains, keep your defense on the sideline. Like you said, a year ago, he only had 92 yards throwing it. No touchdowns and one interception. He's off to a much better start tonight. Has his team at the 44-yard line. Straight give, Darius Geis. And straight up the middle, Geis goes to midfield. And remember, they're running that ball right at a true freshman. Shedrick Charles, number 77. Garrett Broomfield, number 78, is the left guard. But two true freshmen, two of them are playing for this LSU offense. When you talk to Ed Orgeron, he said, we have to build up our inner guy. Our, our offense and defensive linemen are not LSU that we're used to seeing. Second and five. Again, Gage in motion. And a bobble, and he got the handoff to him anyway. Tries to step on this time. It doesn't work. Anthony Averett said, no, not this time. Brings up third down. In a way, oh boy, nice ball handling. He kind of dropped it as Brad told you. He was lucky to get it to him, wasn't he? Yep. Third and medium again. I'll tell you, Jeremy Pruitt loves to blitz in these situations. And he's going to talk it over with his defense. We've got a timeout. Taken by LSU. Vital third down. They want to talk it over as well. Alabama leading by 14. Wednesday on CBS in the fight against terror. The Navy SEALs are our best defense. Don't miss David Boreanaz in a new drama. SEAL Team Wednesday, 9, 8 Central, after Survivor. I remember the last third and five. Etley had to come out of the pocket on a busted play. I'm sure Jeremy Pruitt, defensive coordinator, remembers that. Let's see if he tries to keep him in the pocket with a little pressure. Last pass he got to Stephon Sullivan. Again, they're heavy to the left side on third and five. Now, take that back. The ship goes back the other way. Bring five. Etling rolls to throw. Fires a dart wow, complete wow. to Chark. Beautiful. Chark caught a big pass a year ago, maybe the biggest of the game for LSU when they had trouble moving the ball against Marlon Humphrey. And boy, he gets wide open on this. Get him out of the pocket. Nice pin block to get him out of the pocket and a slip and a fall that time by the Alabama defender. That's what kept it so wide open. So Antling with that 21 yard pickup is seven out of 12 for 80 yards. Yeah, that, he's got that's LSU acceptable. Down to the 31. Yeah, that's acceptable. LSU will take that. And he's going to throw it out in the flat, complete to Chark, who he faked the handoff to. Short game. You know, Brad, one of the things that when you watch the Ole Miss game, the LSU pass receivers, even though they gained 600 yards, the wide receivers did not catch a pass. But in this offense, you cannot get caught up in that because through eight games, the wide receivers have 94 touches. They're getting a lot more rushes, only 53 receptions, but 41 rush attempts. Whereas a year ago, they had 73 receptions and only seven rush attempts. A completely different offense. Darrell Williams had over 100 yards receiving two weeks ago in the win over Ole Miss. He hasn't touched it yet tonight. Darius Geist tries to spin his way in, and he runs right into the doctor, Rashawn Evans. Darius Geis, who had 276 yards a couple of weeks ago and went over Ole Miss, became the first SEC player to have over 250 three times. That's pretty strong, including a career-high 285 against AM last year. Yeah, and his, his season was really spoiled a little bit by an injury early in the year. He's just coming on. His knee is just now getting healthy to, to play the way the uh, Tiger fans were hoping we'd see from him this year. And here's another third down. Need to get to the 20. Etling fires on the sideline. Chark made the catch. Wow. 
Levi Wallace was right there, but a great throw and catch. Absolutely a great throw. Well, you couldn't have handed that ball off any better than that. Levi Wallace, a tactician at corner. Look at that coverage. That's what you have to do. That's what Clemson did to LSU, excuse me, to Alabama. They had guys covered, they just completed the passes. Guys got it down to about the three. DJ Chark, the number one receiver, the guy that called the flash. What Boy, a throw. Catch. And he had that huge play to turn around the football team against the Florida game with the punt return. Remember that. Yep. He comes out. Second and goal. Couldn't have dialed this up. A 10 play drive so far and three third down completions on this drive. John David Moore is in front of Geis in an eye backfield. Throw to the corner. Incomplete intended for Torrey Carter, who we saw catch a touchdown pass in the Florida game as well. Incomplete. You know, I, I really impressed with Sean Deion Hamilton, the inside linebacker. Hurt his knee a year ago, but he's so smart. He was about a half a step behind. Then he read the tight end. That's his man. He goes for it full speed and makes the defended play. He's the other Alabama player that's a semifinalist for the Buckus Award. Alabama's red zone defense, best in the conference, as they are in most defensive categories. Third and goal at the four. Etling. Looks right, wants to come back to the left. Throws broken up at the goal line. Averett knocked it away. Well, he did try to go right, and this time Levi Wallace had the play taken away to the right side. He rolls back left, and nothing there. Might have had a chance to throw the ball to Geis, but that's really being picky. To throw the ball well against Alabama, though, sometimes you got to be picky. Not a lot of open players. Connor Culp has hit seven straight field goals. This will be a 21-yard attempt. And he Ooh. makes it eight straight just inside the left upright. Yeah. If that was three yards back farther, that wouldn't have made it. <laughs> As it is, they go on a long drive and have to settle for three. And, and the great news for LSU is they did it on third down. Bama in front, but LSU on the board. Adam Zucker in New York with this Ford update. In the ACC, Miami trying to remain among the undefeated and stay atop the Coastal. Malik Rozier to Braxton Berrios. The Canes score first, 7-0 on top of Virginia Tech. Second quarter, back to Brad, Gary, and Alley. All right, Zuck, thanks. Uh, with the goings on today with some more upsets and of course this was the first week of the college football rankings what does it really mean well if you look at the last three years it doesn't mean all that much yeah it, it, remember three SEC teams were in there in 2014 and it was another one that got in Alabama survey two says. out of four and survey <laughs> says two out of four again Alabama wins in 15 and of course Clemson a year ago we're just starting with this carnival right yeah it's just getting good yeah this has a feeling like 2007 when two loss LSU got in there that brings us to a little question for you for everyone that's watching tonight in our prime time our Affleck trivia question is Ohio State won the first college football playoff championship in 14 what were they ranked in the opening poll and the opening poll this year this is how it looked after Tuesday things, things will shake up next yeah. Tuesday yeah the Penn, the Big Ten guys uh, took a little tumble yeah, yeah. yeah it took one on the kisser that's for sure yeah Wisconsin still alive obviously they had kind of a slow start before they got rolling today. Here's Jalen Hurts with his first design quarterback run. Almost got face masked and got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Arden Key right there with him. Yeah, remember he ran for over 130 yards. He's actually leads the team for rush attempts for Alabama, even though he's not running as much as he did before. But Arden Key is a difference maker. The LSU Tiger fans know when they've got number 49 playing his good football, they got one side of the field they feel pretty good about. Now Jalen's with an empty backfield on second and 10. Going long right sideline over the outstretched arms of Henry Ruggs. 
incomplete. How about Greedy Williams that time? The true freshman defensive back, number 29, never panicked. Greedy Stayed Williams, in there. number two in the conference in interceptions and passes defended, including that one right there. Yeah, and he's going up another, gets another true freshman. He probably played seven on seven against each other last <laughs> summer, right? <laughs> so third down and long for Alabama. This would be a great stop for LSU. Hurts in trouble, gets away from the pressure. Throws going left and it's incomplete. Intended for Ridley and he's still down over there. He got tangled up with the first down marker. Well, I, I can tell you, if you're Ed Orgeron, and as he told Allie at the beginning of the game, the word is believe. And that is what he's been telling his football team all week. If you don't believe we can beat him, we can't beat him. And that is what he's been selling them. And remember, this team, as we send the open, left for dead right. after the Troy ago. game. And now he's got this LSU team believing that they can come back. Remember, 20-point deficit against Auburn. They come back and win. J.K. Scott's done a marvelous job of keeping Chark out of the return game. Hits wow, it way up in the air again. not fair. Chark's going to field this one, though, at the 20. And he got by the first way. DJ Tart's done this twice this year. Yeah. Got a flag, though. So it's all coming back, it appears. John McDade, our referee, trots over there. And Ogeron has words with the guy that's a guilty party. Yeah, I think it was number 13, Kirkland. Defensive back that Third gets the push from behind. Block in the back. Very, very clear. Receiving team. Kelly's 10 yards. First down. Timeout. Kirk, Kirkland's gone. I didn't think he'd have a return. They haven't had one all year. <laughs> 7.38 to go in the first half. Still 14-3 Alabama. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Les Miles, BJ, and I get to cut up on today's action, including Iowa's romp over the Buckeyes. Nathan Stanley, five touchdowns. JT Barrett, four interceptions. And Iowa blows out number six, Ohio State. I've been to Kinnick Stadium a lot of times, but I don't think I've ever had a blowout like that over Ohio State. 14 to 3 here. Mika Fitzpatrick's back on the field as he wanted to be. As we saw earlier in the ball game on this long ball, pulled up, looked like his left hamstring, handed to the tent for the first time, and then hit in the head on that hurdle by Gage, had to go back in the tent a second time. Then Jeremy Pruitt says, you're not going back out there yet. Get back over here. Well, <laughs> now he's still ready to get back out there. Got the chin strap ready in case. LSU from the 13. Here's a jet sweep again to Derek Dillon. Alabama waiting on that one. Down he goes for a loss. And it's Hootie Jones. The jet sweep is the responsibility of the safeties. The safety has to get wide. He has to anticipate the speed. If he comes too shallow, he'll never get there. Hootie Jones playing in Minka's spot makes the play. He timed that beautifully and hustled in there. For a loss of a couple. Just to let you know, though, remember that jet sweep is like the fullback in the option. You cannot go away from it, or the rest of the offense won't work. Again, the major shift to the right. Chark comes out to the left. Derek Dillon the other way, and it's Darrell Williams. And Williams got free. We mentioned he had a big game a couple of weeks ago, and he's got a first down run. And that's what I'm talking about. You must get this Alabama defense thinking. And I call it a little bit, this is what I call this offense. The dash and the smash with a little whiplash as you're turning <laughs> back and forth, okay? Because you, you know, you're going back and forth with your head looking at those guys, but if you don't go dash wide, you can't go smash inside. Look at the numbers. How about that? Now this is, compared to the nightmare they had here two years ago, this is rolling out an offense. Here's Williams again. And another good run. Got about five. When Al Williams made the tackle, we asked you earlier, Aflac trivia question, 
And it was Ohio State winning the first college football playoff in 14. What were they ranked in the opening poll? Started at 16th. So you don't have to be in that top four. You just yep. have to win at the right time against some really good competition. Well, Alabama fan remembers that, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> That's C. Kelly game. Straight hand off the Williams. Yeah, that's, that's that defense. That was Isaiah Bugs, too, number 49. And Anthony Jennings, number 33, finally healthy. Isaiah Bugs is the one recruit, number 49, right here on the end, that LSU thought they had. Ed Orgeron thought he had He's him signed. He's a Louisiana native. They'll see yeah. his junior college. They thought they had him all signed up, told him how much playing time he'd get. And Bugs, who, by the way, is the fifth leading tackler yeah. for this Alabama football team. Deshaun Hands going, get me out there. He's playing my <laughs> spot. Third down and five. Here they come. Down he goes. Never had a chance. Ronnie Harrison was there. Yeah, I'll tell you the Jeremy Pruitt MO. Remember, he does not have Ryan Anderson or Tim Williams, his two outstanding pass rushers. But now, because he doesn't have those guys off the edge, he starts bringing those in that position. He's playing linebacker because they're in a dime defense. So Ronnie Harrison makes his second big play of the game. Zach Von Rosenberg to punt just outside his own 10. Whoa, and they came after it. Got the kick away. Marks will field it at the 25 and go down immediately. Great coverage by Gage on the special teams. It is, but the Alabama's fans are going, hey, he caught it. We'll take it. <laughs> right? That's exactly right. Fed about five of those fumbled punt returns. They're just, we'll take it right there. That's okay. good. Coming up in a little over four minutes, Geico Halftime Report. Adam Zucker, BJ, and Les Miles will have scores and highlights from previous games. Talk about this one. I know Les took LSU to win this, as of course he would. Well, this is how you get back in a football game right now. Remember, LSU will get the ball to start the second half. If they can get a stop here, that's how you get back in the game. Hurts gives it off. No, he keeps it. And Jalen Hurts into the secondary. Great fake to Bo Scarborough. He got me anyway, and he got some of the LSU defenders. Help it knocked him off his And pins. if you're an LSU defender, you have to go for the fake with Bo Scarborough. He tore you up the last two drives of last year's game. At the end of the game, when Alabama had a 12-play drive for a touchdown on a 15-play drive for a field goal, it was Hurts and Bo Scarborough. It was actually the breakout game for Bo Scarborough. And now they're fake. The flare pass out to him, wanted to come back to Ridley, and the ball was tipped. Rashad Lawrence, the big fella, got it. So they're part of the way to their stop. Rashad Lawrence, when he's healthy, he's another one of those guys that can match up with this offensive, physical offensive line for Alabama. He's had trouble with both ankles, but when he's healthy, he's a load in there. Second down and 10 from the 43. Hurts, straight shot in and out of the hands of Devontae Smith. Well, it's hard not to like Greedy Williams, number 29. You know, he stays with plays, and he also has the great thing that every defensive back loves. Luck. He has a little luck in his side. <laughs> so that say, one should have been had that one, yes. yes. And Smith might have the best teams on this Alabama team. He does not drop a lot of passes. Let's see if LSU can come up with that stop that Gary's talking about. Third and 10. 23-49. Can they make a play? 49 trying to sneak through there. He at least flushed Hurts back up into the middle. And Jalen Hurts heading to the sideline, but he's tagged out of bounds by Corey Thompson. How about that? 49 flushes him, and 23 finishes it. There's Key coming up the middle, and when Hurts takes off, it's 23 that tracks him all the way across the field. Totally. He was lined up on the left side. He was not blitzing. He was somewhat spying. He was playing off, but he 
knew instantly where Hertz was going to go, and he got up there before Hertz could get the first down. Scott comes in to punt again. He would just like to keep it out of that guy's hands and put it down inside the 10 somewhere. Man, does he get the ball in the yes, air? Yes, he huh? does. Well, he's like six foot six, you know, with that yeah. arc that he's got to punt. He not only dropped it inside the 10, he put it at the six with 252 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, but remember now, if you're LSU, Alabama has all three timeouts. They could find a way to get this ball back. You just can't play safe if you're LSU. Etling has done a pretty good job, has thrown one interception in the first half. He absolutely does. I mean, think about it. In the first half, he has already more passing yards than the last three years yeah. from a quarterback, and they're running the ball. I mean, effectively. I mean, you know, you know, I don't remember very many teams that have run the ball without a passing game against Alabama. You have to be multi-dimensional to move the ball against them. They start from the six. Various guys, a tough two, maybe. Davis, the first guy to hit him. No timeout from Alabama. They want to see another play. Nick saying, show us your cards. Down under two and a half minutes now in the half. Well, Gary talked about it. Leonard Fournette probably had more yards in his first three carries with the Jaguars than he did in 17 yes. last year. <laughs> Second down, eight. They're just going to give it to Geis again. Well, I thought he had a cutback there. I, th I really thought he could have cut back and picked up another three, four, five yards. Every yard is so important when you're running the ball. Running right, let's see if he had a cutback lane. See that lane? Oh, yeah. I thought he had that cutback from there, and I, I, I really did. Easy for us to say from up here. Yeah, but, but you're you right. Know, you, you know, it's... It, it, it takes the extra special runner against this defense. You got to feel that. And sometimes when you haven't had a lot of success, you lose that patience for that cut that you need. So now how fancy did they get on third and four? Nick plays it safe. No timeout. They give it off to Sullivan. Sullivan got the first down. And that was a big first down because you knew the timeout was coming. So Nick Saban's instincts were correct. He did not want to give this LSU team any life at all by taking timeouts and having a, a drive at the end of the half. Geist got out there trying to lead the way. Stephon Sullivan got the first down on the sweep. Looks like both teams are willing to go in here. Right. LSU's not in a big hurry, neither is Alabama as we're down to 55 seconds remaining in the half. Geis bounces it outside this time. Got about six. This is basically now garbage yards because uh, I think both teams, listen, LSU doesn't want to make a critical mistake to end the half, and Alabama, if they'd have got a stop, they'd have called timeout, but uh, they don't want to give this LSU offense any life going into halftime. Now we're down to what we expect to be the last play. Yeah, in this situation, you wonder why they would even run the ball. If you're going to give up, give up. Take a knee. Netling will be under center. Gives it off. Well, guys got another first down, but that ends the first half. Levi Wallace made the final stop of the second quarter. Well, I thought they needed two stars. Arden Key came through for LSU, yep. and I think Danny Entling might have played his best half of football as an LSU football player. That we've seen him for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So they head to the locker room, trailing, but very much in the thick of the football game. Alabama having won 31 of their last 32 here at the stadium, had the lead at halftime, and Nick is with Alec. 
Coach, you said your team hasn't had to handle a lot of adversity this season. Now you have it. How do you expect them to respond? Well, we'll see. You know, we can't get off the field on third down very well on defense, which really hurt us in a couple drives. And, you know, we're not running the ball with any consistency, and we're getting in a, long, a lot of yard, long yardage situations on third down. So not the way you need to play winning football. So we got to get things cleaned up for the second half. Speaking of adversity, how severe is Minka's injury, and how can your defense compensate for it? Well, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have to evaluate that at halftime. We tried to play him just in dime there and on the goal line where we know he's not going to have to run deep, but we'll see what happens. Thank you, Coach. Right, thanks. Well, even without Minka, they hold LSU to just a field goal in the first half. 14 to 3 here. A lot of other action going on around the country earlier today and yet to come. And Adam Zucker and the guys in New York have got it all for you in the Geico halftime report. Zucker. All right, Ness, thanks a lot. A crazy day indeed. And coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Les Miles is here along with BJ and I. We're going to show you how Bedlam lived up to its name and the Big Ten's playoff hopes took a hit after this word from your local station. Irv Smith, touchdown, Alabama. Ronnie Harrison with the interception. Scarborough, he is in! Touchdown, Alabama! It's been tough for both offenses as you took a look at the full moon over Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. We start the third quarter with the number 19 team in the country handling the ball first, and they will handle it from the 25-yard line. So it is a night where you turn back the clocks. LSU's trying to turn back Alabama right now, and they're, they're hanging in there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the stats, they, you know, they're rushing for more yards, time of possession. Uh, their quarterback's having a good football game. The really difference of the football game, obviously, the Bama defense is real. Right. But Jalen Hurts has been the difference. I mean, that spin move when he got away from the sack, he's throwing a couple good balls, the scramble down there on that one drive. Jalen Hurts has been the difference in the football game to this point. He led him on that long touchdown drive of 90 yards where he was perfect throwing it and picked up a huge first down with his legs. Let's see what Danny Etling and LSU can do to start the third quarter. Darius Geis, no gain, might have gotten a yard. Let's check in with Allie. Guys, I talked to Coach O. I said, what'd you tell the team at the half? He said, I told him we are just as good as them. We're playing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I said, how do you get more points on the bar? He said, Allie, it's easy. We have to convert. We have to get open. We have to stop making mistakes. It's simple football. We don't want to overcomplicate this, and that's the message I try to give to the team. I think they've done a real nice job throwing the ball. They got a man down on the first snap, and it's Jamie Mosley, one of the linebackers for Alabama. Yeah, C.J. Mosley's younger brother. Mm-hmm. Plays outside linebacker in their base defense. He plays Sam linebacker. Expected to play more in this football game because of the attack of the LSU football team. Number 16, you see him right there, center screen. He is helmet to helmet with yeah. Geis. He gets buckled backwards, oh, yeah. doesn't he? Yep. Yeah. Six five, two hundred and forty-eight pounder. And yeah, I think it's left left knee or got bent backwards. Yeah. It looked like he is really long legged when you watch him out in practice. Right. Like whoa, he's got the height of a defensive end. So let's see who they put in there. Whether it's Mac Wilson or they're going to go nickel. So he comes out. We'll check on him or Alley will. Center official holding that play. It's going to be second down and 10 yeah, once he, everybody. Mostly isn't off the yeah. field yet. Yeah. Now he backs out. And at leg in the gun. Brings Gage across the field one way and back the other. And then gives it off to Darius Geis straight up the middle. And he got close to the first down. And now he's going to be run backwards by Rashawn Evans and Harrison. Well, remember when we did the Florida game, Darius Geis really started to come on late third quarter, fourth quarter. Started getting lathered up a little yes. bit. Yes, now could they get a burst from him? I mean, it's never easy against Alabama running the ball, but the LSU team has thrown for just enough to keep that defense honest. Joshua McMillan comes in now to take Jamie Mosley's spot at linebacker on a third down at a yard. 
Geis, first down, and a few more. Take a look at the first half trends. Well, as we mentioned, Jalen Hurts, it wasn't unbelievable stats, but big plays within it, the number of yards. This has been a, so different from the, I want to say, humiliation they had here two years ago when they couldn't move the ball at all. And, of course, the other big story, Minka Fitzpatrick being injured in the football game. That guy so far is the man of the hour, Jalen Hurts. A long way to go. Just getting underway here in the what, third you quarter. Have, you have to be in shape to play tackle in the Masked Man <laughs> Cameron offense. Shifting back and forth. Here's Gage. Gage trying to get to the edge. Did. Before he's run out of bounds. Well, just to give you an example, Russell Gage is the third leading rusher for attempts on the LSU football team coming into this game. That's how many times they run that jet sweep. He got six. On second and four, Etling wanted to roll to throw, and now he may take off with, on his own and yeah. lose his yardage. Yeah, but that was a good play, Brad. I think if he'd have kept going, he was outflanked and would have lost more yardage. I think getting back to the line of scrimmage here and keeping it third and five, four or five, is, it was a good play by the LSU quarterback. It is going to be right at third and five. The jet sweeps. The first eight games this year has gotten them a lot. Leading Power Five conferences in that capacity. And it's a little different jet sweep than a lot of people use from the shotgun where they toss the ball forward. It all sets up the off tackle play. Blitz coming off the corner, time perfectly. Etling got a little rattled and down he goes. Yeah, you're right. It was Tony Brown coming off the slot who timed it, as Brad told you, perfectly. It kind of really, the blitz, Danny Itling sees it and gets out of it. A good defensive call by Jeremy Pruitt, defensive coordinator. As I said, he's much more aggressive with those blitzes without those two great edge rushers from a year ago. Von Rosenberg, you look behind him, the left footer to punt. Xavier Marks camps under this one at about the 18 and maybe squirted out to the 21 or two. Russell Cage on the special teams doing a little bit of everything. So Alabama is going to have it for the first time on offense when we come back after this. Jalen Hurts, the sophomore out of Houston, done a little bit of everything tonight. Got away somehow from that rush of battle and white. Picked up a key first down on a touchdown drive. And then when he's not doing it with his legs, did it with a long ball to Ruggs. That got him down close. And then on the rollout, found his tight end, Irv Smith, all alone in the end zone for the score. That kept a 90-yard drive. So the quarterback comparison looks like this right now. Yeah, the, the note for Jalen Hurts, though, he started out four for four, and he's one for seven in his last. So that's how he got to the five and 11. Started out fast, but since then, this LSU defense has slowed down the quarterback. You know who else is slow in this game? Damian Harris. Only three rush attempts. Here's his fourth for about four. He's averaging coming into this game, Damian, is 8.6 yards per rush attempt. He's the only running back of the top 30 running backs in college football, highest averages, that has less than 100 attempts. So that's how good he is and how few attempts he gets to run in this packed Alabama backfield. Ten of his attempts are gone for touchdowns this year. He stays in there flanking Hurts, gets the call on a little counter. And that only got a yard or maybe two. Talking about some of the great backs in college football. Damian compared with Saquon Barkley. A lot of people think might be the front runner for the Heisman. Bryce Love, who was back in today. I don't know how he did against he another, Washington State. Bryce Love had another 50-yard touchdown. But give you another example. Bryce Love carries the ball 60% of the time for Stanford. Barkley, 50%. Damian Harris, only 22%. Hurts. Deep straight down the sideline, overshot. Henches is tight end. And, that, and that's tough. When you throw the deep ball to a tight end, as a quarterback, your eyes think wide receiver. 
and the tight end just can't eat up those yards and he you know nine times out of ten you're overthrowing that type of pass and as you would say you got to keep it in the field to play anyway and that one was out of bounds so it's fourth down why this LSU defense keeping the team in now what does the offense do I mean we've been talking about this LSU offense being patient when are they going to go deep again and Shark has been very effective. Remember the slant yep. early in the game? I think they might have to look for Shark again. J.K. Scott. Same looking punt, isn't yep. it? Up in the full moon. And fair caught back at the 20. So Shark takes it there. Scott did his job again. And five minutes into the third quarter. No change in the score. Tough game between LSU and Alabama here in Tuscaloosa. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Ford. AT&T. New York Life. And by Bud Light. President's Mansion here on campus in Tuscaloosa. Reminder, don't forget, later in the game, play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. And I've got a feeling we haven't seen that play of the game yet because we've still yet. got a lot left. Josh McMillan, number 40, is in for Jamie Mosley at the strong safety spot. Sophomore. Probably another four or five star, right? I was going to say sophomore out of Memphis. And <laughs> Probably could play for anybody else. Darrell Williams in the LSU backfield. That's Gage in motion one way and back the other. Play action. Etling wants to go deep right sideline. Sharks out there just over his fingertips. Well, Matt Canada was thinking like I was, wasn't he? Yep. Took a shot. One on one coverage. Levi Wallace again. Decent coverage. Sharks a fastest receiver. Little would have fight been, going yep, on. Would have been had to have been a perfect throw. You're going to be able to get away with that. They're going to let them do that type of hand fighting. So there's the last six possessions. Punt, the interception by Harrison, a field goal, their only points. Punt, halftime punt. This is a Wildcat. Etling's at wide receiver way out here. And Williams keeps it. Ooh, did he run into Evans? And he actually got the better of that, I guess. At least he got a couple more yards at the end of it. And what happens is with the new rule, the offensive linemen are allowed to come from behind and push on the play after it gets stopped. Gets stopped, then watch from behind on the play. It was, was it Sean Deion Hamilton? It's that's down on the play, it is. But Moreau comes in and a couple other guys, and that's that same knee for Sean Deion Hamilton from a year ago that he was forced to miss the second half of the season. He got blocked by Torrey Carter in the hole there and got tangled up in some pain. We'll check on him. And Just under 10 to go. Just named to the Butkus semifinalist list and that's the face of a young man who knows that his night is over. Sean Deion Hamilton. Right there, coming across the formation, you get the block from Tony Carter. It buckles Sean Deion Hamilton's right knee, the knee he injured a year ago. And believe me, I've been through these type of injuries. I broke my ankle. You spend a whole offseason repping it to come back and play, and then you know you get injured the same knee like Sean Deion Hamilton. There's nothing more frustrating as an athlete to have that happen. That laying out in the flat to Williams, trying to make a couple guys miss and can't. Alabama swarms defensively. Keith Holcomb, who just came in for Sean Deion Hamilton, got over there to help make the stop. You want to watch how to play defense? Watch this Alabama defense triangulate the defender. Three players. Now what are you going to do? Three defenders right there. Tony Brown, John Evans and Levi Wallace know where to go. You have to be more aggressive against this defense. Now Evans is limping off a little bit. Here's the punt. Fair catch taken by Marks. 
And if they lose Evans, they've already lost three starters. Fitzpatrick, Mosley, and Hamilton. Linebacking core is not. Fourth. Yeah. Linebacking core is not that deep. That's pretty good. Even though it's always deep, they can't lose that many guys. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa where the Tide lead 14 to 3. A few injury updates for you. It's been a tough quarter for Alabama. Jamie Mosley just came out of the tent. He's dealing with a right ankle injury. They retaped the ankle. They're going to try to let him go. Also, Rashawn Evans went down on the field. They were able to retape his right ankle as well while he was still on the field. He's cleared to play. And Sean Dion Hamilton, we saw leave the field. He went immediately into the locker room with a right knee injury. When I know more about his knee, I'll let you know. Gary, Brad. You know, that same knee, as Gary said, over a year ago, and you see the disappointment out of his face as he heads to the locker room. Thanks, yeah. Allie. Boy, that's, it's one that's thing a bad six hurt. minutes right yeah, now. Yeah, it's one thing getting hurt. Uh, uh, you know, more to your point, all, all at the linebacker position, too. Two injuries right there. But when you hurt your same spot from a year ago, that's when you get frustrated. I could see it all over his face. Bo Scarborough behind Hurts. They fake it to him. Jalen's in trouble, and down he goes, and it's Key and White. The two guys we talked about. I tell you, you talk about a pitcher series. He's coming around the corner, coming around the corner, and they meet at the quarterback here. Just boom. White comes inside. Arden Key comes from the outside. Devin White is a great delayed blitzer. Number 40. Watch him. Leading tackler in the SEC. He reads the run, and if he doesn't get it, he can hit it fast. 21 career sacks and 13 a year ago. Here's Hertz going deep. And almost a one-handed catch by Jerry Judy. Greedy Williams was right there with him. Though, stride this, for stride. I tell you, I, if, if I'm LSU, I am not frustrated at all looking at this kind of prayer of a pass going deep this time. Good coverage again, freshman against freshman. I mean, Alabama's had one drive. Right, one 90-yard drive. Yep. Jalen Hurts, as Brad talked about, got out of there. The other one was off his interception. With uh, Harrison, they've had really, you know, one touchdown on an interception and one drive. This LSU defense and Arden Key, I have to say, <laughs> has been the difference in this football game. They cannot block him off the edge. He looks like the guy from a year ago. That's yes. for sure. Hurts again throwing. This one's complete. First down. No, it's not. It's short. It was third and 20. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, that was a exactly the way they wanted to defend that play is let it happen in front of them. And you know who else is quiet in this game, Brad? Calvin Ridley. Right. Two catches. And, and that was early. It. Yes. Alabama's fourth three and out tonight. They're not used to that. Nope. Negative plays. They probably had as many negative plays in this game against LSU that they can remember in a long time. At least this season, that's for sure. They look behind J.K. Scott. This punt not, not as, as towering, it but might it's end gonna up bounce. Be good. Yeah, it might end up be perfect. <laughs> No matter what he does, it turns out pretty good. <laughs> All the way to the 10. LSU at their own 10 yard line after we tell you that confident on the field and in the classroom are scholar athletes today presented by Quicken Loans. Rashard Lawrence, sports administration major for LSU and Jalen Hurts, quarterback, public relations on the SEC academic honor roll. Quicken Loans commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to LSU and Alabama's general scholarship fund. As you see, Jalen sitting with offensive coordinator Ryan Dable. And they haven't done much on offense, as Gary said. One long drive, one short field drive for their two touchdowns. Eric Dillon, the motion man. It gives to Darius Geis, and he's dropped for a loss. Quinn and Williams. And that time, Quinnen Williams took advantage of Ed Ingram, the true freshman guard he's matched up against. You go up, oh, it actually looked like a busted assignment more than anything, because if it wasn't going to be Quinnen, Keith Holcomb, number 42, was standing right there for a, an easy tackle as well. Now you've got second down and 12. Back at the eight. Russell Gage will come back the other way, but they're going to keep it with Darius Geis. He 
Told you earlier coming into the game as you take a look at the SEC West standings LSU controls its destiny if they can pull an upset tonight and keep on rolling Alabama trying to go to nine and zero, keeping pace with Georgia the team that's already in as the East champ to Mercedes Benz Stadium on December 2nd. Georgia with a win over South Carolina earlier today. Third down and eight. Got to be a little bit careful here. Well, Alabama looks confused. They are looking all over at each other. They give it to Gage on the jet sweep. He's not going to get the first down, though. Well, there was it. See, with you know, without their regular guys out there, you know, they have problems. Now, Mika Fitzpatrick is playing in the dime situation this time and giving the signals. But if you look around, people are looking at everybody here trying to figure out what the coverage is and what they're doing. They get away with it. But that time there was a bit of a confusion from that dime package defense. Ronnie Harrison is the guy that had an interception earlier that prevented a first down there. So it's Von Rosenberg to punt. Oh, offsides here would be a first down. Be High careful. snap. Fair catch taken and tripped up. And we're going to get a flag or not. Are they going to put it away? They're going to wave it off, I think. What they're saying is he was pushed into the retur re returner that time. Marks is going to catch no it. Fair catch it. The kick of the contact of the receiver was pushed by another receiver. It's Donnie First Alexander down. that rolled into him. He tripped, actually. Yeah, but actually he was pushed by his own guy. I think White actually pushed him <laughs> on the play. That probably should have been called. Thanks a lot, Devin. Yeah, see, the official just sees someone being pushed. He didn't see who pushed him. It was. It was Devin White yeah. that pushed him on the play. <laughs> oh, man. Got away with one there. Alabama got away with a helmet off early, though. Jalen Hurts. No, it's, it's Hurts with a run all the way to the 41. Yeah, when remember late in the game a year ago, the last two drive, that's when Jalen Hurts took over carrying the ball. Wow, look at that hole. Yeah, that is called a hole. That's a canyon. <laughs> that's a canyon. First down at the 41. 15 yard romp by Jalen Hurts. And Dave Aranda said, Our game plan is to stop Hurts running the ball. But what they've done a nice job is stopping everybody. Damian Harris might have gotten three out of that. Donnie Alexander helped on the stop. The previous run, when you play quarterback the way he plays quarterback, he looks for guys to hit. <laughs> Second down at eight. Pressure from behind. He got rid of the pass, and it's right on to Calvin Ridley, who got a block. Ridley inside the 10. He wanted to score so bad. Well, we got a penalty coming back, though. At least Arden Key thinks so. Key feels he was held on the play. Holding. 71 offense. Tenure penalty. Second down. Pierce Baker with a holding call. <laughs> wow. Negates a big play. Pierce Baker's right here. Let's see what happens on the play. Oh, actually, I think it was Jonah Williams, number 73, that at least that's who Arden Keith. That one could have been called. Pierce Baker gets it, but it could have been called on Williams. At any rate, it's the first penalty of the night. It's a big one because it, it was sure going to be is. first and goal. Yeah. I mean, that's a, what, a 40-yard penalty? Yeah. All the way back almost to midfield. From the 49th, second and 18. Blitz coming off the corner. Hurt straight down the middle. Throws a strike to Foster. So they get some of it back. Yeah, now if I'm an LSU defensive back, I'm understanding that my pass rush is giving them problems. Now, do you sit on a couple of plays? Squat on a throw? Hurts got away momentarily, throws on the run, and he tucked one in there somehow oh, to Foster. That was one, as you said, he squeezed this baby in there. 
rolls out and throws one at is in between four LSU defenders. It's actually Cam Sims. Wow, I don't know how that thing found eyes to get through there, but it did. First down at the 25. Play fake. Here comes the pressure again. Hurts going to just get rid of this thing. And Calvin Ridley is going to be frustrated on this one because he turned his defender completely around on the play. He had Williams, Greedy Williams. And watch him turn his defender on this play right here. He's got him one on one, nobody in the middle. Bam, wide open, mm. six yard cushion on the 10 yard line. Hurts taking his time with Harris with him in the backfield. Same Takes play. Down Same the middle. Play. Calvin Ridley. He's got it first and goal at this time. I guess Brian Dable saw what I drew up, right? <laughs> Same play. This much space. Look how much space he has on Kelvin right here. Easy play, easy pitch and catch. 21 yards to the three. And now it's Hurts. Touchdown, Alabama. Boy, if you're a Tiger fan, you're saying we might have got a great break getting the holding penalty. And after that, they pick it up. The pass in traffic was the big play that kept it going. Papanast is in for the point after. Up and good. And courtesy of number two, they tack out another touchdown. Well, as Brad called it, and perfectly, he snuck this one in there to Cam Sims. Devin White was diving for the ball and just missed it. And then Ridley, who was open the play before, gets a repeat. And the next play is Jalen Hurts on the keeper. 56 yards, seven plays. Hurts does it himself. Seventh time he scored on the ground. 21-3 tied. 53rd touchdown that Jalen Hurts has been responsible for in just his second year. Look at the smile on his face. He is one cool customer. Yeah, he's got a blood pressure of 90 over 40. <laughs> uh -huh. Down to the five-yard line on the return. Nick Brossett, nice return, but a flag down. Well, remember, it was third and nine on the 40-yard line. After the holding penalty, Alabama would have been forced to punt. Devin right there. Devin White has a chance. He stretches out, and it gets through for the completion in the first down. Two plays later, Ridley, remember, was open the play before, and then they go back inches. LSU has a great quarter. Bama goes three and out, and all of a sudden, it turns around 21-3 like this. Apparently they picked up the flag, no penalty, so it's first down at the 33. Straight drop, bootleg, throw out to Geis, looking for a block for Morrow, and he got a little bit of one. And look at that run after the catch. There he is, Geis picks up what looks like a first down. This is what Alabama forces teams to do. You know, we've seen it occasionally, you know, when you, they play a quarterback that has that type of game. You're not going to beat them with simple plays or conservative plays. You have to match them physically, number one. And then number two, you have to go for it. They're playing man-to-man, -man and you have to throw the ball a little bit, throw some slants over the middle of the field and go after them defensively. Darrell Williams in the Wildcats straight up the middle. And the Tiger, Darrell Williams in the Wildcat might take it all the way to the one. There's the big play they've been looking for. Yeah, it, they had success earlier with the Wildcat. And this time, Hootie Jones comes in a great block that time by Will Clapp, number 64, the center. They spotted it to two. Etling back. Shoulder throws incomplete intended for Sullivan. What an answer this would be 
Huge. for LSU. Huge. The fans that, that show up at Brian Denny Stadium are hoping for a touchdown here with 153 remaining in the quarter. As we're saying, you bring the whole package when you play this Alabama defense. That's Carter in motion. They give it to Williams. He got him there and he got him in. Touchdown, LSU. I think it was John David Moore, number 18. And Williams followed into the end zone that time. He's playing fullback this time. Gets a key block against Keith Holcomb, and they stuff it in. How about that? A Wildcat. They're looking for something different, and they found it with the Wildcat big play. Connor Kaufman for the point after. An all-important touchdown. LSU just scored. Almost the whole thing was Darrell Williams who had a 100-yard rushing and receiving game a couple of weeks ago. He takes this one on the Wildcat for 54 yards. That set him up at the two-yard line. He did the rest, 21-10. to 10. Big touchdown drive by LSU. Puts him right back in the thick of things as we are nearing the end of the third quarter, 21-10 to 10, Alabama. Well, think about it. LSU has now rushed for almost 160, 159 yards. Their longest rush they had a year ago was 18 yards. <laughs> they just ripped one there for, what, 50-plus? 50 54. Yep. Cameron Gamble's kick. Ruggs will take a knee. Alabama will bring it out to the 25 on offense. Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico, and now thousands and thousands of residents are leaving. Where are they going? Plus a child prodigy you have to see and hear to believe. It's all tomorrow in 60 minutes. Alabama's had a lot of guys go down in this game to injury. Minka Fitzpatrick, a hamstring. Shondi Hamilton out with the knees in the locker room. Mosley has come back in since that ankle. We don't know how much he'll play. And Evans also. So yeah, Minka Fitzpatrick's playing a half speed out there. Yeah. He doesn't even look like himself. Dylan Hurts as Bo Scarborough flares out, gets it to him in the flat. Oh, nice tackle. And it's Arden Key again. Yes. And Scarborough lets Devin White have it at the end of the play. And you know, Devin White was heavily recruited by Alabama to come here. It was between Alabama and LSU. He stayed home, played for LSU, and Brian Dable said he's watched tape of eight games and numerous teams besides the eight teams, and he's the best football player he's seen all year on tape. That's saying a lot. Yep. Here comes a blitz. Hurts in trouble. Got rid of it at the last second in and out of the hands of Judy. What a play by Jalen Hurts. He had to relocate, throws the Judy at the last second, puts it right on his face mask, and it's dropped by Judy. Watch this. He has to relocate up. Then he finds and puts it right there. That ball has to be caught. Can't do it any better than that if you're a quarterback. So that's third and ten. Hurts again. Thompson pressure from behind. He'll keep it. Try to head to the stick. Might have gotten a late block. Did he get the first down? Well, there's no sliding when you're Jalen Hurts, right? I mean, we a couple weeks ago, there's a crackback block that time. Not a crackback, because that would be illegal. But Jerry Judy comes back and gets the cleanup block, turns his body. It, he did not. That was not a targeting. It was a good block. Got Donnie Alexander. He did, but it was completely legal. And the way he turned is really one of the things I advocate that college football needs to have the players do on these peelback blocks. You have to understand how dangerous they are and turn your back. It's still effective. Great block by Judy. So we we'll check on Donnie Alexander during the break with a minute to go, third quarter. Donnie Alexander, the senior out of New Orleans, got up, headed to the sideline. Yeah, but I mean, 
in this instance with that type of block it's effective enough and the ball in the defender gets the wind knocked out of him instead of a concussed head it's I think something the rules committee has to look at cleaning up those peel back blocks they're so dangerous weren't you talking to Commissioner Sankey about well, that before yeah, the game they, you don't, don't let it out of the oh, bag I'm sorry <laughs> I wanted it to be commissioner's idea I was, eaves, idea. I was eavesdropping <laughs> First down at the 36. Scarborough on a cutback run up the middle, and Big Bo for 10. And again, this is where the Bo Scarborough train started to roll a year ago. In the fourth quarter of this game, Scarborough started to be physical, and he carried it on all the way into the first half of that Clemson game until he got hurt. He stays in there on a first down at the 47. Give it to him again. Good defense. Whoa. Well, they're going to come and get him, but he threw one guy off. That was Devin White. Yep. But then White got help from his friends. Yeah, but it was good enough, and it's going to stop it. And this LSU team is going to get to the fourth quarter with a football game. And that's what they wanted. Ed Argeron's been preaching that all week. Stay in the game, get to the fourth quarter, and then we got a shot. We'll see who's got the biggest shot in the final 15 minutes. We played three. Second ranked Alabama 21, number 19 LSU 10. We'll return to Tuscaloosa right after this message and a word from your local station. We start the fourth quarter at Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Number two Alabama with a 21 10 lead. And the ball. At their own 49-yard line, Jalen Hurts, quarterback draw, cuts it outside. Nice gain and into LSU territory. Fourth quarter is underway. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Allie LaForce. Jalen Hurts was the difference at halftime. You said he's still the difference through three he quarters. Is, and, and apropos, it's going to be third down here because Alabama's 43% third down in the year, but only four for 10 in this game. And three of them have been big plays by Hertz on third down. The scrambles, the tight throw, it's been his ball game on third down. They listen, four for ten, three of them almost on busted plays. Third and four here. Wants to throw, does, fires a strike complete to Smith, his huh? tight end. And great protection that time from the offensive line. Allowed the tight end to be able to get downfield and get open. And you can see the LSU players talking to each other. Calvin Ridley goes in motion and frees it up and allows the busted coverage. Two guys take Ridley. On third and four, they got 21 on that pass play, and then they go back to Scarborough. But what a clean pocket he had. Remember, all game, it has been either 23 or 49 or sometimes Richard Lawrence, or once in a while, Devin White, number 40, putting the pressure on Hurts that time. A beautiful, clean pocket. Second down and eight now at the LSU 23. Alabama threatening again. Hurts. I think somebody got a hand on that, but he still got it to the end zone, and it's dropped by Smith. Looked like somebody maybe hit him as he threw. That ball came out a little funny. I'll tell you, if you get a scout report from the Alabama people about Devontae Smith is, he never drops them. <laughs> well, he and this tonight. time, actually, the hand from battle got there a little early. In slow motion, it could have been called pass interference because there was no way that Smith could catch that ball because battle got his hand in there a little early and got away with it. So third down and long again. Scarborough comes up to talk to the offensive line. Throw is incomplete. Coverage. Really good coverage by Tolliver. That previous play when he threw the end zone, Gary, I thought it looked funny when he let it go, and then at the end, yeah, but great it was, play. Yeah, but it ended up being perfect, and it was Battle who raked Smith before he caught the ball. Uh, in a perfect world, it's a tough call because it happens. That's super slow motion. We've got the best slow motion cameras we got That's all right. year, right there. <laughs> Just for that reason, right there. Andy Papanastas is hit 13 out of 16. This is a 41 yarder. And he drills it. And I mean, drills it right down the middle. Tack three more on for Alabama. 
13 25 to play tied have to settle for three but they're up two touchdowns. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Alabama with a lead right now but early on Minka Fitzpatrick pulled up with a bad hamstring there on the long ball Etling intended for Chark. Russell Gage then with a hurdle and Minka got hit in the head and he went to the tent for the second time. Great defense by Arden Key. He has been all over the field much like he was a year ago as a first team all SEC performer. This time Jalen Hurts gets away from Devin White and picked up a key scramble 10 yards for a first down that kept a 90 yard touchdown drive alive. The fake toss the come back to his tight end in the end zone of Smith. And then the Wild Tiger, if you want to call it that, Darren Williams, 54 yards on the sprint for LSU to get him down to the two-yard line. He did the rest, the last two for the score. And that's the play LSU needed to get to 24-10. The field goal moments ago makes it the 14-point difference for Alabama. So J.K. Scott, who's been punting well all night, Set to tee it up. And listen, it's still just a two-possession game if you're LSU. You know, you, you cannot now say, okay, uh, Danny Edling, you're now Burt Jones, and we're going to let you throw the ball, <laughs> the LSU All-American. They have to manage him. He's had a good football game, but they've managed him well. Scott hits this one to the near corner, and Edwards Alaire will take a knee. They'll bring it out to the 25. So that's where Danny Etling and the LSU offense will start things off with 13 25 remaining. Thursday on CBS, see what America's favorite geniuses are up to on TV's number one comedy. Catch a new Big Bang Theory Thursday, 8, 7 Central, only CBS. If you thought America's favorite geniuses were Gary and I, you're wrong. <laughs> Alley, maybe. I think we both live with someone that will disagree with that, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> First down at the 25. Williams shifts over. On a wing left, that's Chark back in motion this way. And then that way. And a play action. Beautiful. That lane throws it out. Williams again. He's become a big part here in the second half. And he gets about seven. Hey, you're right, Brad. Told you earlier he had 100 yards running against Old Miss, but he caught the ball for over 100 yards against Old Miss, too. First player ever to do that at LSU. Have 100 yard receiving and rushing. And that's the the big, one of the major differences in the attack from this Matt Canada offense. It's not wide receiver centric in the passing game. It's tight end H back and running back is the main guys. There's the numbers on that lane much better than a year ago. And that's Williams on the ground for the first down. Ronnie Harrison stood him up. I'm going to talk about both these offensive lines. They have played every play in this game. Charles Brumfeld, Clapp, Ingram, and Weathersby have played. Might put in an extra tackle every once in a while, but both teams, Alabama and LSU, have not made a change at all in their offensive line. And as you said, some of those tackles run more than the wide receivers do, just shifting from one side to the other. Play action. Etling wants a long ball. Lays it out there. He's got a man in Chark. And he dropped it. He misjudged it. Like a center fielder overran the ball. Chark thought it was going to go deeper. It died out. Watch him overrun the ball. Tries to come back and make the catch. He ends up dropping it. Averitt is lucky on the play. But if he would have slowed down earlier, it would have been a much easier catch. Chark had one of those earlier where he misjudged a little bit in the end zone. That could have been a score. He's looking at Danny Edling and go, come on, man, throw that thing a little farther. And <laughs> Danny goes, that's all I got. That's all I got. I can't throw it I any got. farther. I got what I got. And flags down. Might have been Brumfield, the left guard. I'm just saying the All great start. wide receivers. 78, offense. 
Tucker penalty. Second down. The great wide receivers always make the ball look like it's perfectly thrown. They judged it instantly, you know, like a, a great center fielder makes it look like an easy catch. This time, Shark misjudges it. Could have obviously been caught. Right. But it was a tougher catch the way he played it. There is Geis now in the Wildcat. And he'll keep it all the way. And he's only going to get about a yard. Josh Frazier, the first guy there. Boy, I tell you, Alabama is rotating in on defense. Frazier is a backup player. We've already seen Holcomb with all the injuries. We have new linebackers in there, different front guys. I will say this, when you look at all eight of them they play, they all look kind of the same yeah. with different numbers on them. That's all. They're built the same. Yes. You know who's been quiet in this game? Number 94. Deron Payne usually attacks a couple plays and makes plays in the backfield. There he is right in the middle of that front. Fitzpatrick is back in the game in the dime. Playing the dime position right there. The quarterback. And we got a timeout taken by LSU. So they're down to two timeouts here in the fourth quarter. That has 11.25 remaining and has second ranked Alabama up by 14. Zucker in New York, Mark Rick, an undefeated Miami. So many close games, but they're starting to pull away from Virginia Tech. Malik Rozier on the ground. He also has thrown two. Their last loss came to Notre Dame last season. The Irish come to Miami next week. TCU, a final, a winner. They play Oklahoma next week. They're tied atop the Big 12 with the Sooners. Guys. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by GMC. Allstate, Chick-fil-A, and by the Home Depot. Well, maybe Miami's better than everybody thinks they are, huh? Yep. Came in as one of the five unbeatens in the country. We've got one here. We saw one earlier today on CBS. Maintain their perfect record. The Georgia Bulldogs are heading the Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the SEC Championship. Will it be against Alabama? Minka Fitzpatrick out on the field. Third down at 14. Etling waiting, waiting, throwing late, and diving attempt by Russell Gage. And they're going to have to kick. Danny Etling now three for seven in the second half for 18 yards. The Alabama secondary has clamped down at him. A couple of missed opportunities. A deep ball in the beginning of the third quarter and a deep ball here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And missed on him. That's Zabian Marks back around the 25-yard line. Awaiting Zach Von Rosenberg's punt. Nice kick. Has to backpedal to the 20. Got a couple of blocks. Got about six on the return. Maybe seven. So Alabama's got the ball back with a 24-10 lead. Yeah, well, now this LSU defense inside Gilmer, Lockature, and Lawrence have to stuff it inside. Get it in that situation where Thompson and Key can make a play in the backfield. Time now is starting to work against them. They're not going to be able to protect the quarterback much longer in this game. They need a stop. They can't have an eight or nine play drive right here. You see the completions and attempts are the same. The yardage in Jalen Hurts' favor. He's got Damian Harris behind him, and Damian gets the carry. Cuts it outside, puts a lick on Donnie Alexander, and picked up about three. Tell you what, there's going to be some time spent in the cold tub tomorrow. Absolutely. And you know, for Alabama, the easy part of their schedule is over. Their five wins, Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, Texas A&M, Arkansas, and Tennessee are 6-21 and 21 in the SEC. LSU, Mississippi State, and Auburn. 20 and 6, and if you add in Georgia, 29 and 6. This is a run all the way by Hertz and Key, and Frank Heron make the tackle for a loss. 
Frank Karen had a sack turnover last year. Could LSU find a turnover? I mean, Alabama doesn't turn the ball over. No. But boy, they could turn, uh, really use a turnover at this end of the field to make it way more interesting. Alabama's had two interceptions all year. Only one of those was Hurts and three fumbles. And their turnover ratio is plus 10, which anybody in the world would take. They got a long yardage one here on third down, though, third and 10. Here comes Key again. Hurts trying to scramble away, but he's going to go down. It will be fourth. Greg Gilmore tripped him up. Yep, talked about Gilmore inside one of the nose tackles. He rotates with Ed Alexander. You watch him on tape. He is a strong two-gap player. Number 99 right in the middle. Lays out. Long game and lays out. All day he's been taking on that big, strong offensive line. Rushes inside and makes the play. Still a ball game. Yep. Still a ball game. Seventh punt tonight for J.K. Scott, and he has been blasting most of them. Yeah, and the way you can't get returned, you go after it. He did go after it. Oof. Up in the lights again. Shark has to get out of the way. That. that takes no, a great you, roll. You, you got to catch that. You cannot give up 12 yards, 15 yards to this Alabama football team. That ball was in the air forever. You need to come up and fair catch it. Be aggressive. 58-yard kick. Not so sure Chark didn't lose a little confidence by not catching that last long pass. Might be right. LSU's got it back, though, when we come back. Coming up next Saturday on CBS, our doubleheader, Florida and South Carolina get together at noon in Columbia. And then we'll be in the Plains. Top-ranked Georgia, number 14, Auburn, tangle at 3.30 Eastern as Georgia is in the conference championship game. Perfect 6-0 after their win today. So congratulations to Kirby Smart and the Dogs. We're the number one team in the country. Now, will they be number one Tuesday night? If Alabama beats number 19 LSU right here, maybe the Tide fans well, will the, get what they're the, looking the for. score's the same, 24-10 right now. Except South Carolina wasn't ranked. Yeah. That's neither here nor there. We still got nine minutes to go here. LSU in desperate need of a score on this drive. Darius Geis. Nice run, tough run. Well, you know, the excellence of this Alabama run here, seven times they've had an 8-0 start, and only five other teams have done it. Now six with Georgia, right? One, two, three, four, five other teams. Georgia's done it this year. And only one has won the national title, Auburn. Can Georgia do it? Because usually Alabama ends up beating them. <laughs> Here's Etling trying to get it to his tight end. It's incomplete. Let's go to New York for an update. Here's Adam Zucker. All right, Brad, a big week for the Pettis family. Gary Pettis, third base coach for the World Series champs, and his son Dante Pettis for Washington, going 64 yards here for the ninth punt return touchdown of his career. The all-time FBS record, and his dad would do, waving himself home. Huskies trying to remain the only one-loss team in the Pac-12, guys. Wow, that's something special. Nine career punt return touchdown. Wow. Well, here we go. Badly needed, under nine minutes to go. Can they pull off another third down conversion? Etling looking left all the way and then fires on the sideline. And he got it. Yes, he did. Complete. Over to Derek Dillon. Might be the best throw that Danny Etling made in this football game. Back shoulder throws are nice, but sticking it in downfield in between the zone is what the quarterback coaches love. When you do that, you stand in the pocket and deliver a 35, 40 yard throw sideways and stick it right on the numbers. That's impressive. They pick up 16. He threw it cross field, but as far as length down the field, they got it to the 38 yard line. First down. Darrell Williams in motion. Comes back the other way. They're going to give it to Geis, though, on the inside. That's having both your tailbacks in there, faking the sweep to one and giving it straight up to the other. It does. And then the, the third phase of it is that offensive line has to knock somebody off the ball. And that time, with all the juice going sideways, that defensive line for Alabama won. And that's what, when you went to practice Thursday, that's what I heard all day. I stood behind the 
defense because I was so curious on what they were going to do. And Jeremy Pruitt was preaching to the inside linebackers, the defensive linemen, just do your job inside. The secondary will handle those uh, whiplash dash jet sweeps. Atley, plenty of time. Fires long, incomplete intended for Derek Dillon. They had a couple opportunities in the second half that just one was a bit overthrown and one a bit underthrown, but just can't quite come up with the big play. Remember this in the third quarter, he had Shark going down and just overthrew it by about two yards to the outside. And then he had Shark again and just underthrew it by about four or five yards. Two opportunities and didn't get it. You don't get a lot of chances against Alabama. Third down at seven. They've got to worry about the first down first here. But they've also got to worry about only having seven minutes left to go. Etling again. Pocket now starting to collapse and he's going down and it's Deron Payne bringing it. The pain that is. Dylan Moses is there with it. of 11. You could tell by the way Epling was moving around that it must have been good coverage. Levi Wallace at the bottom. Down the middle, no one there. You can't throw it deep. There's a safety behind the guy in the middle of the field. Epling has to go left, and there's nobody on the left side of the field. Nobody to throw it to. So they did pick up one first down. They wasted... I, don't, I shouldn't say wasted. They had the ball about four minutes or so, but they didn't get anywhere as far as scoring. So now we're down to six and a half. 40. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. I mean, it's never easy. I mean, you're right. It's, it's the word isn't wasted. It's just hard. Right. It's, you know, Atley made that great third down throw to get a first down, but, you know, nothing is easy against this Alabama Divas. You don't win, go eight, no, seven times. And the rest of the conference has only done it once. Five other teams because. You don't have talent, and it's easy. It's never easy against these guys. Fair catch taken by Marks at about the 39-yard line. Alabama with the ball back. 6.22 to go. That's all they have to burn right now. Jalen Hurts has been their star as he's been for two years. Their defense pretty darn good, too. Hey, the offensive coordinator and the head coach in that home. And I know exactly what Nick Saban's telling them. Right now, I want to win on offense. I want to put this game. Let's, if we want to be national champs, there's going to come a game when the other team has a Deshaun Watson that we're having trouble with. When we got six minutes to go with the game and we got the lead, we have to put the game away. We didn't do that and it hurt us before. We can do it right now. That's the type of things you do. You coach forward. Listen, and the test is not easy. You're going up against a high-level defense. This is a great test to see if this Alabama offense can finish out this game on the field. First down at the 39. It's Bo Scarborough offset in the backfield with Hurts. And Bo gets the call. Trying to follow his blockers. Good puts defense. his hand right on their backs. Good defense. Successful play. I really admire this LSU football team. They're a little bit undermanned from what I've used to see in LSU talent in the past. Ed Orgeron has talked about it. We need a big recruiting class of, of defensive and offensive linemen. But boy, they are playing a good football game. The last month, you can't take anything away from Absolutely their fight, not. can you? Nope. Oh. Second. It, and the only guys that believed were those guys on that team. Because the, most LSU fans had turned it off after they lost to Troy. Arden Key in a stand-up spot right there on the right side of the line. Trying to tee off. But Scarborough goes the other way, and it's a nice play by Heron again. Devin White, Arden Key, two of the key players. Devin White, not going to lie, Coach Saban said, if you go there, we're just going to have to beat you every year. A lot of people play for different reasons. For me, I'm playing for the state of Louisiana, which is where he's from. But as Gary said, almost was a Crimson Tide player. But man, he came in leading the conference in tackles. And he's all over the field again tonight. And he was the guy that called out his teammates after the Troy loss. Got to study more. Yeah, that's right. You can't mail it in. A lot of true freshmen on this football team, and they don't understand how tough it is to play at this level. 
Third and nine. This will be a huge conversion for Hertz. And it's tipped. Oh, nice play close. by Dante Jackson. That was close. That ball's a half a foot lower. lower. Could have been a one-handed stab. A gutsy throw to the outside. If it gets over, it might be completed to the outside, but defended very nicely. We always talk about Alabama's defense being so good. That's the sixth time LSU is forced an Alabama three and out. Yeah, and, and they're still in the football game. You know, you score, you go outside kick, because you only have one timeout, or two timeouts left, excuse yeah. me. Scott, oh man. This one's even higher than the other seven. Back to around the what nine yard weapon. line. Remember, all year, he has not had one punt even returned. It came close, but they had a penalty before. 51 yard punt. He's buried LSU in a hole again as we go to New York. All right, Brad, and a big one for first in the Pac 12 South now underway. Arizona punter Josh Paula can't handle it. The Trojans, John Houston, mops it up. They have a 7 0 lead, and they've helped Khalil Tate to negative rushing yards so far. Halfway through the first quarter, there, 439 remaining in the fourth quarter here. All right, now Nick has to go to his defense and say, okay. <laughs> we got to win with we defense. Win with <laughs> There's always another mess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That length from his own goal line. Throws complete to Russell Gage. Short game, clock running down. It'll be under four and a half. Miles Brennan in the game. A little better thrower, getting a lot of... Uh, of good vibes from practice when you talk to both Matt Canada and Ed Ogeron they said he's going to be a gifted player for us when the time comes short throw over the middle of guys trying to change directions does get the first down I mean Miles Brennan is more of a pure passer there's no doubt about it Edling took a big hit on the last series remember I wonder if he's a little bit stunned Under four to go. Brennan in trouble. Evades the rush going to his left. Now he's going to keep it and slide for about four. And the clock continues to move. Trying to get. Stephon Sullivan set up way down at the bottom of your screen. Brennan throws to Geis. A little crossing route. Darius fighting for another first down. Is about a yard shy. Alabama is willing to give up short yards to eat time off the clock. They're waiting for one big play, a sack, to turn it around. Geis gets the first down that they needed. Drake's out for about four more. Rashawn Evans finally brought him down. We're under three minutes. Here's a freshman trying to run a hurry up to get a quick touchdown. Not easy, not in Tuscaloosa. Brennan in trouble, going down. Like I said, he plays soft zone. You keep it in front of him, and you understand that Miles Brennan might be a good quarterback someday, but that's not Deshaun Watson back there. <laughs> it was funny when we had uh, Evans, Sean Evans talking, I go, how you like that Deshaun Watson now? He said, I've been watching. <laughs> Twenty four ten Alabama. Let's get a quick update on Danny Etling. Allie? Guys, there's nothing physically wrong with Danny Etling. The team confirming with me that he is healthy, but it was purely a coach's decision that he missed too many assignments and they felt the need to shake it up. Mm. Wow. He just made his best throw of the night prior, I thought, to the outside and gets benched. At any rate, it's Miles Brennan, the true freshman, on a second and 16. He throws deep sideline, and that's out of bounds. Yeah, again, throwing to the tight end on those is very difficult. They just don't eat up that yards that you're expecting, and uh, those defensive backs close on those tight ends so that deep down the field. Third down and a bunch. 
They're running out of time and they're running out of downs to make something happen. Well, if you would have told Ed Orgeron that they were going to outgain Florida with two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the game, he would have been Bama, excuse me, outgain Bama. They'd be saying, we're winning. Throws this one behind his intended receiver and that's fourth down. I mean, you go against Alabama here the way they've been, you know, throttled on offense the last couple times, and you have more yards and still only produce 10 points. And most of that came on a wildcat type play. Right. Yep. One big play was a 54 yard run by Darrell Williams. And then a two yarder by Williams for the score, their only touchdown. Alabama came in only giving up nine points, eight points per game, Boy, They're right about on their average. Hard to believe it's a two, two touchdown game, which means it's a game and you change quarterbacks. This is maybe his last chance, and he's not going to get a chance. Down he goes, Dylan Moses. Alabama takes over. Well, that's how you feel when it, when you've got long yardage. You just rush four guys. You sit in zone. You understand you've got a young quarterback. He's probably not going to see the alleys that are necessary to stick the ball in, and you finish off the football game. LSU can only stop at one time as well. They're down at one timeout. Well, Alabama set a record for the SEC in their first five SEC wins. They won by a total of 200 points. And, Brad, we were there for, I think, 150 of them. Right? Yeah, well, yeah, we were. <laughs> so this one was a little tighter, but they still win it. If you like to play the comparison game now that you're a Georgia Bulldog fan and they're going to the championship, Georgia beat Tennessee and Vandy by an aggregate 8, 86 to 14. Alabama beat those two by 106 to 7. The Bulldogs going into today won their five SEC games by 32 point average. Bama won its five by an average of 40. Yeah. Well, I will say this even though Georgia is in the SEC championship, okay? They still play Auburn, Georgia Tech, and then whoever they play. If they lose a game, that means they have no margin of error. Right. If they go into the SEC Championship undefeated, they might lose and get in. Damian Harris, no, it's Jalen Hurts keeping it, and Corey Thompson flagged down, and he runs him down. Don't have any more respect than anybody in this league than Corey Thompson. His sixth season, Two years he sat out with injuries. Come back, one of the Personal better players foul. on the Grasp field. The face mask. 23 defense. Now he's half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Yeah, <laughs> just... It's funny, he grabs it, and then he took his hands up like I didn't do anything. And, and then, then he goes, still well, I still, tackle. But I still got a tackle. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, missed two complete seasons, 14 and 16. When he started at LSU, some of the guys he's playing with were in eighth grade. Eighth grade. How about that? I think I was in my third or fourth year. <laughs> Down to the final minute. First and goal at the seven. And they don't really need to run the play again. They could take a knee if they want. Give it to Damian Harris, who got a yard, maybe two. Now LSU is going to fall to six and three and three and two in the conference. Alabama is going to remain perfect at nine and zero oh and six and zero. Oh. And will they be number one or will Georgia be number one next week when the rankings come out on Tuesday? Doesn't really matter really until December third, but it's fun to talk about, I guess, for the fans. Yeah, but Ed Orgeron got his team to finish a good football game here. They were not embarrassed. Now they get Arkansas at home and then at Tennessee. They can still have a very successful season compared to where they were after that Troy game. No doubt about that. So Jalen Hurts going to keep that ball and head to the locker room. He's the guy that created enough offense tonight for Alabama to win their 23rd straight conference game. And their 32nd win in the last 33 here at Bryant Denny Stadium. Well, the 82nd edition between these two teams was another hard hitting battle, without a doubt. LSU didn't have quite enough offense 
And the winning coach is with Allie LaForce. Coach, you said this was going to come down to how the team handled hard. How do you grade the way they responded to the challenges of this game? Well, hey, you got to give LSU a lot of credit, man. They played a great game. They had a good plan. Their players had played hard. They were physical. It was a tough game. But I'm proud of our players with the way they responded in the second half and did what we had to do to win the game. This is a great win for us. Your team suffered a lot of injuries, specifically on defense, and not just any defender, but the leaders of your defense. How'd they overcome it? Well, the other guys stepped up and played pretty well. They made a few mistakes out there, especially on a long run when they were in Wildcat. But we'll, we'll, we'll get better. I hope we get some of these guys back. Thank you, Coach. Right, thank you. One of those players was Rashawn. How's your ankle doing, bud? I was doing well right now. Um, yeah, it got banged up a little bit, but I feel great. You weren't the only one. There was a lot of defenders that suffered injuries today. What were you telling your teammates as you all tried to overcome those? Um, basically, just hold the rope. Um, you know, we had a lot of guys that went out. We had some younger guys to step up, so I felt like that was the big thing for us to just get those guys in there and just play ball. Your team hasn't been challenged a lot this season, but tonight they were. What kind of heart did they show you that you had, and, and how did you come together to make it happen? Um, these guys were just relentless. Um, we knew that it was going to be a hard game, just the fact that we're playing against a, a great team. And, um, you know, just as you can see, we just continue to just play ball, and we just band together, and, you know, we just saw the, uh, the results. Rashawn, congrats on the win. Thank you. So the defense of Alabama does its job again tonight and they win it to go to nine and oh let's take a look at the GMC game changer tonight. This guy is so smooth. He told us the last time we talked to him. You know what. He said you're only as strong as your trigger man. This guy's the trigger man for Alabama. Yeah and no matter what question you ask him he says I'm just trying to win games and championships. And then he takes it in himself to cap things off. He was the game changer. Just a sophomore. But some kind of player. He's only lost one game in two years. He wins another one tonight. We'll wrap it up when we come back. Twenty four to ten Crimson Tide remain undefeated. With a win over LSU as we. Take a look at our play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Remember this one? Jalen Hurts got some pressure, rolled to his right, and then somehow that ball had eyes as he got it to Sims for the first down. Here's how Eli Gold called it. Here now is Bama, two of eight in third downs. Jalen rolls right, Jalen loads up, throws to Sims. He makes a first down grab. What a thread the needle strength that was to the 25 yard line. That was a beauty of a throw by Jalen Hurts. Great call, Eli, and that led to the capping score in a 24 to 10 victory. So Alabama, number two this week, will they be number one next week? Georgia, number one this week, will they be number two next Tuesday night? Those two were heading for a collision course maybe December 2nd in Atlanta. How big would that be? Don't forget, big doubleheader next week. Florida, South Carolina. Then we'll be in the Plains as top-ranked Georgia takes on the Auburn Tigers. For Gary and Alley, Brad Nessler saying so long from Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama still perfect at 9-0 with another win tonight at home.